What up folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. We are bringing you another kit review today and if you follow the channel, you know recently we hooked up with the awesome British trail running brand, Harrier. They sent us loads of their great kit down to test and review at the channel. We actually did a short video introducing the brand to our viewers. If you haven't checked that out, it's well worth a look. But they sent us one of their exciting ultra bundles. So we got lots of kit to test from carbon Z poles to one of their Kinder 10 litre race vet. Well, now thinking of it, they sent us all this kit and sent us an ultra bundle. So why don't we get this kit on, get outside and go and run an ultra. Yep, we are out uh, down at sunny Boss Castle on the north coast of Cornwall. We have got an awesome route planned to test the Harrier Trail running kit. Um, it's a bit of a famous route, or should I say infamous route. So we're gonna be running across Cornwall, linking up the harbour of Boss Castle, all the way across Cornwall, lots of varied terrain, tarmac, trail, moorland, over the top of Brown Willie, the highest point in Cornwall and we're going to pop out at Lou. It's an old route that used to be used back in the day by smugglers to get stuff or bounty or buried treasure, whatever they used to take across this old smugglers route. So I thought, right, we've got lots of kit, two running packs to test. Who would be the best person to run on an old smugglers route? Um, turn the camera around, mate. Yo ho ho, and two bottles of water. <laughs> yeah, we're running on the route to test out the Harrier kit with Steve Wyatt, AKA the pirate. Take that silly out and eye patch off and let's go running, come on. So the last time I came through this churchyard was in the middle of the night and there was a few of us running together in the UTS 100 and we literally popped out the bottom of this and popped into this spooky graveyard. Terrified we were, so we ran through as quick as possible. It's a lot more welcoming in the daylight, to be honest. Beautiful. Pretty little church though. Beautiful. The oldie bridge, mate. Look at that. Is there any trolls under there? Mr. Troll! So that is where we've come from. We are still going uphill. Can't believe how big this hill is out of Boss Castle. But epic views back out to sea. It's going to be an awesome day. So it's not a particularly well signpost path, but we've had a few signposts so far. And Steve's got his map, which is definitely helping. I think it'd be pretty interesting without the map. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a really well signed route, but it's a shame because it well is. Trodden, but. <laughs> yeah, or, or or a route at all. Uh, it's such a shame because it should be well marked. It should be easily accessible because it is a fantastic route. Unfortunately, we're not particularly good at marking trails in the UK. I think it's something we need to improve on. Makes it a bit more of an adventure though. We have just popped out onto the first bit of sort of hard standing tarmac. Unfortunately, that is a bit of a downside to this route. We do have to run a bit of road. Get to tick the miles off quickly. First impressions are really good. We're five and a half miles in and I am carrying a lot of kit. I've got probably more kit than I'd carry for a hundred miler to be honest. I've got about three litres of water. We've got the carbon poles on the front. We've got a Harrier dry bag full of kit. And so far, no movement. Pole carrying system working really well. No bounce on the poles either. So definitely a thumbs up so far. Right, so that is the end of the tarmac and we are heading on to Bodmin Moor. Awesome, eh? we soon ticked off the miles there. I just looked at my watch and we've done nearly 10 miles. So we were, we were flying through that section. Yeah, back on, oh dear, oops. 
Uh, we'll, we'll just fix the gate first, <laughs> then we'll get onto the moor. But yeah, it's going to be a stunning day. I think it's going to be a warm day though. <laughs> it's early and it's warming up a tree. The cloud's gone, the sun is coming out. But um, I'd rather have it like this than wet and windy. The more when the weather's like this, this looks epic. It's going to be a great day for an adventure. Running for adventure. Funny, that, isn't it? Our first impression, Steve, of the five litre pack, what do you reckon? Yeah, lovely, comfortable. Yeah. Suits all my needs at the moment, so far. Yeah, it looks good, man. Fits well. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm wearing a pack, to be honest. I've got all my stuff that I carry in the ark. Yeah, yeah, all awesome. the waterproof trousers that's in. Yeah, okay. yeah, same here. I might fail the kit check. <laughs> I think we'll be all right today. So yeah, first impressions are good. At last poor Yorick, I knew him so well. <laughs> the remains of them, the last trail runners that came through here. Maybe that was the beast of Bodmin Moor. dead end mate. There was always going to be a few navigational issues on this route. Like I said it's not the uh, not the easiest route to follow. Right. What do you reckon? I'm on it. Where are we going? Over the fence. We're going over the fence. Going over the top. There's, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're in the trenches. Which is ch -ch -ch. There you go. Is that, is that a technical term? Is it? So what are we doing? Cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. <laughs> right, so we got we got the first more first more first tour coming up. So we're gonna be getting out the old carbon Z poles and we'll be giving them a first go up the hill. It's not quite an alpine mountain, but you know, still get a good idea of how the poles work. Let's get to the bottom of the hill and then we'll get the poles out. So we have got the first tour to go up, showery tour. So it's time for some pole action. Super simple to put these poles up, click them into place. You got this one that pulls down, clicks in, block that, and then you got a little adjustment, little adjustment catch, and you can set them to the height you want. So pretty simple. I usually use a 125 pole, so we're in. Job done. Jobs are good one. And that's it. You know, carbon's a pretty solid, really comfortable hand grip. Obviously, you've got a loop as well, um, but. You know, for, I think they retail for £69 for a carbon pole, which is, um, when you compare it to a lot of the other poles in the market, an absolute bargain. But it'll be interesting to see how they compare to my other poles. I tend to use Mountain Kings. I've got also got Salomon carbon poles. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how they perform when they're under half the price of the other poles I own. So get that one set up as well we we are off yeah, I was really impressed with the with the pole carrying system as well I think it's great to have different options I've never been a fan of carrying poles on the back of my pack bounce around and, and quite difficult to get access to them so having this front mounting system way easier you know especially if you're doing mountain stuff you're going to be using them for a long time but then you might have a long descent where you don't need your poles for a couple of hours you can just clip them on the front and it was so secure no movement not bouncing around so a real good attachment system on the front of the pack loved it but to be honest it's nice having them out over these tours. I spent most of the day waiting for him. I'm not sure if it's uh, in his mind, but he will improve one day. Yeah. 
that's a bit better. And we are heading over to Brown Willie. Steve is just giving the poles a quick try. I came out the first tour with them. Yeah, super solid. Again, as good as any pole that I've run with, to be honest. Really, really well thought out hand grips. Really nicely sculpted, really comfortable. And the straps are adjustable, which is a really nice feature. So you can pull them straps in really tight around your wrists and you feel really sort of dialed into the pole. So really good, great value. Definitely the sort of pole I'd want to use for long, long stuff. You know, UTMB, CCC, TDS, mountain stuff, where you want a nice, comfortable pole because you're going to have it in your hands for the majority of the time. Steve is off and away. <laughs> Looks like he's loving the poles. But yeah, we're getting these tours done. We'll be across the moor in no time. And we're actually making really good time. And there's only been a few little navigational issues. I think I need to take them poles off you. It makes you even quicker. I can't keep up with the best of times. <laughs> tour around the wind so I thought I'd just you know take this opportunity to take the pack off just to show you how much kit I've fitted in this pack because I am super impressed with the volume the fact that with all this kit in the bladder and the water there's still no bounce there's still no movement so let's take this off so in the main compartment I have a gilet in my Harrier dry bag I have a collapsible hot cup which is pretty cool. We have a bivvy bag just in case of emergencies. We've also got uh, the Harrier small runner's first aid kit, which uh, is actually a really well stocked first aid kit and has got everything you could possibly need if you did have any problems. Also, I have a waterproof jacket. So again, pretty much most of the kit I'd carry for a hundred miler. Obviously in the back of the main compartment uh, or in the separate bladder compartment I've got the two litre bladder so I've also got two litres of water so that's two kilos of weight. In the side pocket on the right hand side I have a mobile phone spare GoPro batteries. In the front stuff pocket I have Harrier's collapsible cup. Also we've got some salt tabs. I have one of uh, these Colombian energy blocks. I've been using a lot of these lately. Uh, a good friend Will has been using these and he put me onto them. These things are super tasty, uh, real good level of energy and they dissolve in your mouth really quick, don't get stuck in your teeth. So I've been using a lot of them, really, really good. Would definitely recommend them. And then over to the other side, we've got more nutrition. So we have uh, a bag with gel, shot blocks, again, loads of nutrition. Uh, in the other front stuff pocket, uh, I've got my notes for the video to remind me what to talk about. Also, I have the Harrier 300ml flask in the other front pocket. Steve's got the 500ml uh, flask in his bags. And also, obviously, I had the poles on the front of the pack. So, a lot of kit. Like I said, pretty much all the kit I'd carry in a 100 miler, apart from maybe waterproof trousers and maybe a spare face layer. But all that kit in the pack, and so far it has run really, really well. Right, let's get it all packed up, and uh, we're going to be heading down off the first tour and making our way to Brown Willie. Right, where did I put this? Everything is packed in again, the poles are still out. It's, uh, what a stunning day, let's crack on. Come on, Steve. No. <laughs> of Brown Willie. A really defined path as you go over the top. Really, really popular with walkers. So probably the easiest bit of navigation going over the top. And then we're dropping down. Hi, hi. Uh, and then 
then we'll drop down off around Willen. That's pretty much all the climbing done. Should be some pretty good flattish running. We'll be able to tick the miles off pretty quick, but the top is in sight, 50 yards away. short and sweet that we've uh, touched the top and we are off back down so we're heading on back down this is uh, the route from the new year's day brown willy run so i've run that several times so this is actually a bit of the route that i know quite well right so we are off of brown willy and we are back on the road so time to get these poles away but they've been really good super impressed uh, nice and stiff because they're carbon so you feel like you're getting good uh power through the poles and really grippy on the handle grips which is definitely an important feature so we probably won't have to use them again it's pretty uh, flat there's not a lot of climbing from here but we are dropping down to uh, the famous Jamaica Inn we've just been having a chat we're going to top up our bottles because we're halfway so by the time we get to Jamaica Inn it's going to be what um, 18 miles so yeah, we'll, um, we're going to pop in, top our water bottles up. We're going to have a nice big pint of cold coke as well, just to give us a bit of energy, something to look forward to. And then again, we've got some really nice running from Jamaica Inn all the way to Lou. So we've got a bit of tarmac, we run by Colliford Lake, and then we're going to do some woodland stuff as well. So we've got some stunning, stunning views and some stunning scenery to run through. But let's uh, get these away and let's go and have a nice pint of cold coke. All right, we have had a couple of bags of crisps. We've caught up with the girls. We have had an awesome cold pint of coke. But he's pressurizing me. We, we've got to go. We've got to go and do some more running. I did try and twist his arm to get us to stop and have a roast dinner, but he won't have it. <coughs> we are all topped up with water. So we've got a, enough water to get us through the second half of the trip there's the girls in the van and they are leaving and we're going to see them in Lou so let's crack on the sun is still out the sky is blue there's cows in the field which go move yeah <laughs> there we go yeah I don't know if you can see that on my watch but I can't wait to get off this hard stuff. This is Steve's comfortable apparently. 7, 7, 15, 7, 20 minute mile in. Yeah. Really comfy. I'm, you know, I feel so comfortable. So comfortable, so relaxed. <laughs> Come on, Trail, where are you? More cow content on the channel. I know you like a bit of cow content. These are pretty awesome, aren't they? They're looking at us thinking, what the hell are you doing? We've just stopped and we're looking at the map and there's this big bright orange flag and then we just heard gunfire. So just to be on the safe side, we're just going to check the map and make sure uh, someone's not going to shoot us. So uh, they, they might shoot us. We just have to run fast. Okay, great plan. Let's go. What's that down here? Maybe there's a gate down here. Oh. Right. I think we're getting somewhere. We have a gate and we've got a path, which is always a good sign. It's just your, the, your vest, your bulletproof vest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. I knew I forgot something. Trail running essential, a bulletproof vest. Maybe that's something Harry will want to think of, you know, another future product. <laughs> right, anyway, we're going to concentrate. We're going to keep our eyes peeled for people shooting at us and try and get through here safely. Hopefully, we'll be alive to give you an update very shortly. Oh, that was interesting. We survived the gunfire, one. Uh, there was a lot of off-piece running, some pretty tufty stuff, some pretty hard bits of nav as well, but I think... We made it through all right. The old calves were starting to twitch a bit and shins were starting to twitch a bit, which is never a great thing when you've still got 
what, 11, 12 miles to go. But we're doing good. 24 and a half miles in. And we reckon it's going to be about 35, 36. So we nearly cracked it. And it should be a bit easier, easier going from now. We're off the Tufty Moorland stuff. So hopefully we should be able to pick the pace up a little bit if the legs will allow us. And he's off. And yeah, it's so, so rude. If you're new to the channel, this is Steve Wyatt who I'm running with. Um, Steve Wyatt is five times winner and joint winner of the Arc of Attrition. So he's pretty handy at running a long way. And uh, I'm just trying to keep up with him. marathon check-in and this is what I was saying about how varied this route is we just dropped into the woods stunning woods following this little stream we got a nice bit of shade it's definitely getting warm out there we've got some funky steps to go up but this is beautiful running man such a great route such a mix of terrain and we got some markers there. We've actually got some, some markers telling us where to go. Amazing. So yeah, marathon check-in, feeling good. We're both still running. The kit is definitely holding up. Super comfortable, super impressed with it. In fact, it's probably holding up a bit better than my calves, that's for sure. But yeah, a lovely bit of running now. Coming through the woods. Nice to get back on the trails after being on the road for a bit. But loving life. Feet wet though, they make that schoolboy error. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's going to my back. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? Late September, and it's a warm one. It is a warm one. They forecasted 21 degrees, but I reckon it's a bit warmer than that. Right, and, and just what you want when your calves are you know, a bit twitchy, a bit crampy, another style to go over. Style it, mate. Style it out. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Now we're down. And there you go, Steve jumps over it like he's done nothing. Like a pro. Like a pro. Oh, okay. I'll remember this, I'm sure it's down here. Okay. Sorry about that, we had a bit of a YouTube blackout for a bit. Um, we had to leave the filming out and just dig deep for a while just to get here. <laughs> um, it's been a bit of a struggle, I've got to admit. But we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm going to dunk my hat and I'm going to man up and get on with it. Salvation, Steve. <laughs> Salvation. <laughs> oh. Wow, there's. Oh. Maybe underestimate that just a little bit. That is the smuggler's way done, and uh, I'm done too. And let's run an ultra. Let's test this kit running an ultra. I think, I think it's a great idea with no oh, chain in that okay. Yeah, I think it's a really sensible decision. Oh, well, it worked okay. out for the best. Yeah, we got here. Tested the kit, the kit was great. Yeah, lovely pack. I'm not. <laughs> if I had to re review myself, I'd probably give myself, what, three out of 10? But the kit was fantastic. That was awesome. Yeah, boom. Boom. Well, 
that definitely turned into a bit of an adventure, that's for sure. Uh, I thought I'd just pop up with a quick conclusion on how we felt about the kit after testing it on that epic route, the Smuggler's Way. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed following us on the journey, seeing some of the amazing trails we got to run on the day. It was a stunning day weather-wise, and I hope you enjoyed watching my demise as we went through the route. I think uh, maybe I underestimated it with not a lot of long training miles in my legs. Uh, I really did struggle towards the end and have to dig deep. But what I can say, it was a brilliant test for the Harrier kit. Uh, a tough, challenging route. We had to carry lots of kit, lots of water, and it was a really hot day. And what I must say to start with is, we were both so impressed with the performance of the kit. And to be honest, Steve couldn't quite believe the price point of some of the kit that we were testing. He was wearing the five litre pack. I was in the Kinder 10 litre pack. We had both our packs fully loaded with kit and water. Steve had never put his vest on before the run and um, his words were, wow, it's so comfortable. And I think 10 miles into the run, he said, it doesn't even feel like I'm wearing a vest. We had no irritation problems, no issues at all with either vest. So high praise indeed. Um, definitely passed the test. Flying colors ticked every box. Really happy with the vest. Gonna just wanna highlight sort of some of the, the standout features for myself. Um, I was a bit dubious with the price point on the quality of the finish and the fabrics. I shouldn't have been. The fabrics are brilliant. The kit is really well put together. But things I really liked was the really simple solution to an adjustment system on the front of the pack. Great idea, works really well. You can really tailor the pack to your needs. And then storage uh, on the move, accessible storage. Storage you can get to while running without taking the pack off. Loads of storage. Front stuff pockets big side zip pockets. You've got these little stash pockets up the top as well. So, you know, all your gels, your phone, your salt tablets, stuff like that can all get to on the run. You haven't got to faff around to get to any of the stuff. In the main compartment itself, loads of storage. Obviously it runs with a bladder. I used a bladder on the day. You've got a separate compartment for your bladder. Um, so I had the two litre Harrier bladder in the pack and all my kit in a dry bag. I was carrying the kit that I would carry pretty much in a hundred miler. So I probably had about four kilos of weight in this pack. No irritation, no movement, no bounce at all because it sits nice and snug and high up the back. So every aspect of the pack um, for the price point, you really can't fault it. If you follow the channel, you're probably aware that, you know, I am a bit of a, a kit nerd. Uh, I've been trail running for years. I have run in and tested and tried lots of running packs over the years from all the big brands, you know, Ultimate Direction, Hoka, Salomon, Camel Pack. I probably had seven or eight different Salomon packs over the years and the Kinder 10 litre from Harrier holds up to all of them, that's for sure. And to be honest, it beats most of them. The other item, um, one of the bigger items that we tested was the Helvellyn Carbon Z Poles. I am a big pole user, I have been for years. Uh, I tend to use the Mountain King poles or I've got a pair of Salomon Carbon Z poles. And again, the Helvellyn poles from Harrier um, definitely stood up to all the poles that I've used. Again, they pack down super small and work really well with that pole carrying system on the vest. Um, I personally found putting them on the front was the best way, so I had them on the front of my pack. They were super secure. They were probably on my pack for 30, 32 miles, and I had no issues, no problems with them at all. But when I did take them out to go over the tours, really simple system to put them together. Obviously, being carbon, they're very rigid, so you get lots of power through the pole. But what I really loved about the poles, one, the handle grips, very comfortable. This really contoured handle grip very comfortable um, to hold on to for a long period of time as well. No irritation, no blisters, nothing like that. And I have had poles before that have been quite uncomfortable over a longer period of time. But I also like uh, the straps, the wrist straps, really easy to adjust. So you can really get them sort of locked in um, to your fit. And then having a little bit of adjustment on the pole, I think it's a great idea, you know. Uh, I'm a bit taller than Steve, so we could adjust the poles, get them a bit shorter, and we could both use them and both test, test them. So a nice little feature from the pole. Um, I have actually heard that Harrier are gonna be doing a aluminium version of this pole. So exactly the same as E-Pole, the same handle grip, the same strap, the same system, but in an aluminium format, and it's gonna be half the price of these apparently 
and the Carbon Z poles only retail at £69, whereas the equivalent, say, in a, my Salomon poles, I think they were about 140 So again, quality poles, carbon at a great affordable price. Similar to the pack, you know, when you look at the Kinder pack, um, retails at £59, you know, compared to, say, Salomon packs that are 120 125 140 150 So great performing, but great value. And all the other little bits and pieces that we tested on the day from, you know, the dry bag that I had all my kit in, really well put together, tapered seams, you know, again, another solid, well thought out bit of kit, even down to the first aid kit. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I've seen some of them little runners first aid kits that, you know, a terrible quality. They hardly have anything in them that you could need. This is a really well thought through, well stocked first aid kit, that's for sure. And then the little things like the collapsible hot cup, the bivy bag, and also the soft flasks. You know, I was really impressed with the soft flasks. Um, I had a couple of 300 mil ones, Steve had a couple of 500 mils. Um, really, really nice to have a nice wide opening. So if you're racing, really easy to fill up at aid stations. If you're putting tailwind in or anything into your bottles, again, very simple with that wide opening. Some of the bottles on the market with them, the narrow opening are really fiddly and hard to uh, fill up. So really, really simple. So impressed with the bottles. Uh, they also come in lots of different shapes and sizes. So Harrier do the 300 mil, which this is. They do the 500, they do the slimmer bottles. They also do the ones with the long straws on and adjustable straws. But what's cool as well, they do them in different colors. So you can sort of color code your bottles so um, lots of colors available from pink to blue to gray um, so if you have water in one bottle say electrolyte or energy in another bottle you could get pink bottles for your electrolyte clear bottles for your water so you know what you're drinking from so again even down to the soft flask really really well thought out and well thought through product you can probably tell by all the superlatives that I was blown away by how well this kit performed. Um, Steve was so impressed and he just couldn't believe some of the prices when I was telling him the price of the kit. He couldn't believe how affordable it was. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing to highlight how good the kit was, was there was just one thing that I could pick up on that maybe could be changed just to improve the kit a bit. And it, it really is me being fussy, but I think it just highlights how good the kit was because the only thing I could pick up on was the length of the zip pulls. The little uh, zip pull ends are really nice, they're textured, really grippy, but I think the zip pulls are a bit long, so when you run, they could bounce around a bit. That is the only thing I could pick up on. So again, I think it highlights how great the kit was. Since launching the brand on the channel and when we did the introduction video, we have had nothing but positive comments about the brand. Guys who run in the brand, raving about the brand, or even viewers that watched the video and then they went out and purchased a bundle and are really over the moon with the kit that they got. Also, we've heard great things about the customer care, customer service, which I totally agree with. I love the passion, the drive that the company has got. I love the passion drive Kate has got for producing great kit at affordable prices, trying to get people out on the trails to highlight how amazing trail running is. You know, it's a great ethos behind the company and it can do nothing but drive the company forward to success. I think we're gonna see bigger and better and greater things from the brand. I think they're here to stay and they are gonna get bigger over the years. They're already producing lots of other kits. So they've got some exciting things to bring to market uh, over the coming months. Uh, I know they've got trucker hats, breathable hats, visors. Uh, I also know they're working on clothing, so they've got tops, I think a waterproof jacket, and they're gonna be bringing out some exciting new colors in the race vests. I think there's a red and an orange colorway coming out very, very soon. So definitely worth keeping your eyes peeled for some new kit coming to the Harrier website soon. But to wrap it all up, folks, if you are new to trail running, I would definitely recommend going along to um, Harrier Trail, having a look on their website, having a look at that beginner's bundle that they do. Uh, again, offering the kit in bundle format is a genius idea and you get a little bit of saving along the way. I think that beginner's bundle um, has everything you need to get out on the trails and to enjoy that trail environment safely. Um, all you'd need to do is purchase yourself a pair of trail shoes and some running clothing and you'd be off and away. But I personally feel it's not a beginner's brand, you know? The brand is real good quality product. So even if you're uh, intermediate, if you've been running on the trails for some time, you want to update your kit, or if you're experienced and you're looking for some new kit, Harrier Trail Runner is still worth going and checking out because 
the standard of the kit at the prices, you know, I think you really will struggle to beat it. I just want to say a massive thank you to Harrier Trail Running for sending us all this amazing kit to test and review. Kate's support of the channel has been brilliant since we uh, reached out to them and sent them an email. Um, Steve is over the moon. Steve says thank you, Kate and Harrier. Um, he's kept his vest. He loves that five litre vest. So I think he's going to be spending many, many more miles in it. But I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Hope you also enjoy seeing some of that stunning Cornish scenery and watching us push the Harrier trail running kit through its paces. If you did, Give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've left links below for Harrier Trail Running. I couldn't recommend enough that you click on that link and go and check the guys out. Check all their products out. I don't think you'll be disappointed in uh, the quality of the kit, how it performs, or the prices, or their customer service. So click that link and have a look. But thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Why have I not on the video lots? <laughs>